Hello everyone, my name is Naren. I need this session. Let's understand what exactly is row oriented database and column oriented database is all about. So if you go to any database website, they usually mention that particular database is either row oriented database or column oriented database. But have you ever wondered how the performance of your application will get impacted by choosing row oriented database over column oriented database or vice versa? So to understand that, in this session, let's discuss how exactly the data of your database is stored in the memory and how row-oriented database handles it and how column-oriented database handles it. By understanding that, you will exactly can judge for any given use case what kind of databases you have to use uh, in your systems. So let's go back to whiteboard and understand that. So I have taken one use case. Suppose you have an application called user management system and obviously you'll have a database or a table for to save all the users information. So let's take this as a user's uh, table and um, the other table which I have is the dashboard or a backend admins dashboard data. So this particular data contains uh, different minutes as a time and um, the total number of requests uh, are the traffic to your system and also the total number of 500 errors which you saw in the system uh, at any given point of time in in uh, minutes granular time so this database is used to get the data for your dashboards so the dashboards will usually have all the traffic information say this one will be a request per minute in any given you know, duration of the time so usually in the user management system how we use this user's data is we we'll usually have forms in which you show the uh, different fields and we usually the queries the kind of queries we actually execute on this particular table is say if i want to show a user's specific profile information what i what i usually do is i basically query data for that user i basically query that specific record of the user by the user id so in this case, user ID one, and I get all of this information. Basically when I'm querying, I get name, place, age, and even many attributes specific to that user. I pull that record and show that on the form. So it will be like A, UK, and 10 is what uh, we show in the form. Now the user can update this data and then save it. While saving, we usually use transactions. So usually this kind of workload is called as transactional workloads. And wherein this kind of workload where you have a lot of data and we usually fetch a specific column or one or more columns in the table with any given duration. In this case, if admin wants to see all the total number of traffic or all the traffic to my system, uh, he usually choose a duration. Say, I want to see all the traffic for past 24 hours. In that case, maybe the query looks something like, okay, 10 a.m. today to 10 a.m. yesterday. So we'll have to fetch all the records from 10 a.m. today to yesterday 10 a.m. And we are usually interested in specific columns data. We won't be fetching all of the uh, all of the tables data. We are interested in specific column, one or more column it could be, when we are showing one or more dashboards or one or more graph. So in this case, I'm just interested in the traffic to my system. So I usually query all the request per minute column from 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. yesterday. So I usually get all of this data over here. Okay, so if you see the way we are accessing data clearly sees that here we are accessing row wise. Here we are accessing column wise. So to make your application perform better, we have to save the data in the same fashion. Okay, even though we need a table representation and a row like abstraction here and here both the cases here we usually access a specific record we there are very rare cases where we access give me all the you know places of the user or give me all the ages of the user but here we will usually do that give me all the records uh, of a specific column within a duration but here we don't usually um, fetch a data give me a record of specific id2 and all these metrics because that's not really our business use cases so business use cases is what actually decides what kind of data stores you need to use whether it's a row oriented data store or column oriented data store or databases so if you see here it's a row oriented now if you see here it's column oriented 
So this is how you basically decide which one to use. Now, to make your application perform better, we have to save the data in similar fashion. If this database is saving this all data in memory, it should save all of this attribute together to make the performance better. So when we access the data, we can fetch all of that information together. So usually, so if, if this was the data, if this was row oriented database, how this database saves is one, A, UK, and 10, all of this information together, this also together, two, B, US, and 20, all of this together in the database file. So when we access the specific user's information, we get all of this information together, and it's much faster. So in this case, we shouldn't be saving this data like this. So how we should save this data in this table in the memory to make the performance better. So in this case, the database is columnar database. How it actually saves is, it saves all of this column data together. So how it looks is, so only this information together, 300, 330, 200, all together. This column's data is also saved together, one, two, 10, and whatever the data which was supposed to be here, it all is together. So if I want to render, you know, error by time duration, then we'll be accessing all of this data together. So what if, if this data was stored like row oriented data, then what would have happened? In that case, so how, how this data is stored in the database is, as it looks like here, 10, 300, and one, 10, zero, one, 3, 30, and two, and so on. So now if I want to get the same data to render request per minute, then I'll have to go every row, keep on going until the last file, and just grab this information over here, over here, over here, over here. So if you look at the time complexity, it is like you are touching all of the rows in the table, so it will be like order of n time complexity. So that's like bad, right? So by saving this data by one span or one, you know, you will have to obviously keep reading, um, but all of this data is together. You are actually reading very less data because in this case, we would have rolled a, we would have read every row and then we would have fetched the specific column. But in this case, we are just fetching the columns data and which is uh, stored all together. So it is much faster. Let's understand how this data is also fit into the hard disk, HDD or spinning hard disk to understand even much better. Let's understand how the data is written into disk. So the first question usually is, why are you still using HDD that is hard disk drive? So this is a disk. Why can't you just use solid state uh, devices or RAM because they are much faster than hard disk and you don't need to worry about too many problems the spinning disk poses because SDDs and RAMs are much costlier. Even the distributed systems definition says that we build the distributed system using commodity hardware. When it says, when it comes to hard disk, the commodity hardware is HDD because they are much cheaper. And also if you see our big data workloads, that is huge data, like petabytes of data and hard disks are much suitable because they are much cheaper. So we can still store much and much more data using this uh, you know, cheap hard disk. So the next question you need to understand is what is a memory block? A memory block is a unit of a memory, which usually has a fixed size. And when the hard disk reads the data, it either reads it completely or it doesn't read anything at all. And why do we need a blocks is basically to distribute the data much better in the hard disk or in the memory. So operating system will actually take care of, you know, distributing the data into memory or whatever. Um, in, the, in the disk, we usually call uh, these as sectors, but sectors inside will uh, actually have blocks or whatever. But for understanding, we'll consider these as blocks and see how the data is written. So the next thing you need to understand is how IO is uh, performed on the blocks. So as I said, when the IO is happening, there is a head in the hard disk. It actually moves and then reads the data from these blocks. It either reads it completely or it doesn't read anything. So usually uh, these kind of hard disk prefers to read sequentially, like it keeps on reading and reading, reading. And the performance of uh, you know randomly seeking or randomly reading the data between the blocks is not really good. Like for example, reading the data over here and then jump over here, read some data and read some data over here, read some data over here and all, all like that. 
So usually these kind of disks prefers to be re read the data in a sequential manner because it is much better. Um, so that said, let's understand how the data is written. In case of row-oriented databases, let's take an example. So this is an ID, um, so user ID A, and uh, age is 20, okay, and the place is UK. And how, and, and let's take one more example, 30 and US. So how is this data written into the disk? As I mentioned uh, earlier, that we have to save this together so we can find all of this different attributes of a same user together. So this data usually is stored something like this in the, in the, in the block, A20 and UK. And one more thing you need to understand is there is a fixed size for the block. Usually how databases prefer is to store a record into a, a block. So, so it could be saving something like this and this next record will go to one more block to be 30 and US. Maybe if this could have been fit into here completely, then this data would have also written here. Since there is not enough space, maybe it chose to write it over here. And similarly, if you have n number of uh, you know rows over here, it actually keeps on writing over here. And when you want to update specific uh, record, what happens is hard disk basically goes there and then updates, okay? And then if you want to update one more, it actually goes here and updates something like this. So this is like seeking between um, data blocks or memory blocks to update. So that's why if you know about write ahead logs, they usually doesn't uh, update the record in the memory. They keep appending the updated data into end of the file because for the simple fact I explained, instead of going and updating somewhere here, they keep updating the updated data over here, over here, over here. So this disk keeps on spinning in a sequential order instead of just seeking somewhere else. So the performances will be much better in the databases which actually use write ahead logs um, kind of implementation. But that's like out of context right now. So this kind of data is written like this. So if you see here, we are not efficiently using the memory. So the memory consumed in row oriented database is little higher because we are not fully writing into the complete block. And also when you're reading the data, you have to read the complete data out of it. So even if you want to just read name, okay, just the name with the ID one, we still have to go here, read the whole block. So we are essentially reading all the attributes for that user's record. So there is more IO operation you are doing. Even though this is one IO operation, you're reading more data from the disk uh, and loading it to RAM and then just discarding everything except A. Because you can't just read this part from the block because the blocks are designed that way. When the IO happens, it should read everything at once. So if you had analytical workload, the queries are something like, we have to just read specific column of data in more number of rows so that what happens is the disk will go here and read just, just to read a user, it should read everything. Go here just to read a username, it has to read everything. So storing data in this way is not really good for analytical workloads where we just need just one column of data for many number of rows. But storing the data in this way is really good for transactional load because once we go here, we will read the complete data and then utilize it. Or even if you want to write, we just go here and update over here and it's good. So let's understand how uh, the data is written into the disk in case of um, analytical workload or columnar data. So let's take an example of columnar data. Say we had ID 1001. Uh, we had like request per minute that is 200 and failures are five. To one more record, 1002, 300 requests per second, and there were like four failures. How this data is written into the disk? So in case of row-oriented data, we saw that everything is written, at, but in this case, it is saved in the columnar uh, database. So what it does is it chose, it, it actually gets all of the data for a specific column and keeps it in sequential order. So in this case, it saves all the time data sequentially 10 0 2 i'll take more data just to show a little bit more so if i have something like this it actually saves 10 0 3 and so consider we only have three rows now so it actually takes the next column and fills it in the next sector somewhere somewhere here like 200 
300 and 350 something like this and then the next column okay it starts from somewhere else or maybe i'll just pick it here five four and six okay so this way it actually stores all of the column data together so when we want to read now if i just make a query okay get me all the um, uh, request per second or request per minute data from 10 a.m to 10 p.m maybe we have three records what happens is it just goes here and when it reads this block it actually gets all the information which we needed or maybe if this data was spread into multiple uh, blocks then all it has to do is keep on seeking seeking is much faster it keeps on seeking through multiple blocks and it reads all the columns which we needed here if you see the memory which we read is completely utilized we don't need to discard anything because this is the column we are interested in so it, when it reads we are reading everything we need in that specific column and eff much efficiently using spinning hard disk so that way it is much efficient and performs better and also if you see the data in the block is completely consumed there is no space left even if there was a space left when the next data comes in we can still fit in here because we are going to read it all together so the space utilization is much efficient in this case of columnar oriented databases and also one more uh, important thing to know is when we have similar kind of data in each block operating system or databases can use a specific compression algorithm to store this data and compress and store this data in blocks in case of you know row oriented database we didn't have a homogeneous data type data in a block we had a mixture of data because uh, say for example uh, just to represent the row oriented data block uh, what we had is id name of a user uh, age of a user and place so if you see there is this int and this is string and this is again maybe if it was a int or a float or whatever and string so if you see there is heterogeneous data types we can't use an efficient um, algorithm to compress the data because of the data types are different so in this case all of the data type is similar it could be like if the date and time was represented in string it is string 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 and here if you see int 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 so we can use int integer compression algorithm uh, better and then compress the data and save it here so if you see the facts um, uh, you know the comparison the space utilization is uh, like we can save three times more data in columnar data than the space consumed in row oriented databases so that's the kind of performance we get when you're using columnar oriented databases um, so one more thing you need to understand is when it writes uh, any row say for example when the new row comes in 1004407 so this is the record so this is the new record we need to insert it how it do it does is if it was a row oriented database it just takes all of this and puts it in one block but since it is column columnar oriented data we'll have first the database splits into each separate column so it gets four separately then zero four separately 400 separately you know separate chunks and it goes here uh, so wherever this id was written i didn't show it okay it's fine so let's just write the date or time uh, it goes it takes this data and goes to the block wherever it was if it is full it just write over here 1004 and now we need to update the request per uh, minute data so it goes here and fills in over here and this one goes here and fills it over here so this is how it actually does it uh, just that um, it, it has to break and then write it it could take three different io operation uh, in case of columnar databases but if it was a row oriented database with one IO operation, it would have written all of this information here. It's like it took three times more IO operation. But if you see the uh, you know, analytical workload, once we write the data, we never update it because this is all kind of a, you know historical data, right? Who will go back and update the request per minute or the number of uh, failures in back in time? We don't do that, right? So it's okay. Even if we sacrifice a couple of IOs, uh, when you are updating the data it is efficiently written in the disk so the reads are much optimized because we can read it much more efficiently so that's why when you are deciding which kind of database you need to use or it's, is it a row or a column or oriented database you need to understand what is the business um, requirements if your business requirements require 
more of a column reads, uh, too much of a column reads, then it should you should actually go for columnar uh, databases. Or if your database is a transactional workload where you have to specifically read, locate a record and read that information, it's better to go for row-oriented databases. And also one more last thing you need to understand is how the partitions are done. So in case of row-oriented databases, you'll be basically uh, partitioning by rows, okay? Like how we do in MySQL. But if, it, if in case of uh, columnar-oriented databases, we basically partition by columns itself. That means that all of the data for this specific column uh, is saved in one machine. All of the data for this particular column is saved in one more machine. All of this data for this column might have been saved in a different machine. If it was a row-oriented database, we basically split the records by kind of values, say all the data from one to three, store it in one machine, all the data from four to 10, store it into another machine, and all the data beyond that, store it into a different machine. So that's uh, one more important um, differentiation. I guess uh, I have explained all the important things you need to know about row and column oriented databases, uh, internals. Um, so if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Please tell your friends about uh, these content and um, please leave a comment if you think that I should be improving something or if you want some new topics uh, uh, of video to be made on this channel. Um, thank you.